Jeannie Maiden showing the emotion here. She was determined. Well, Wendy McPherson, if she strikes out, can just win the title outright. She knows it. And she throws a perfect shot on lane 20. Well, they're gearing up and performing when the pressure is at its utmost. Can't get too much closer, too much better of a match than we're having right now. Winnie McPherson can shoot 225. Jeannie Main can shoot 216. Couple more strikes and it's all over. Got to get them one at a time. And it's not to be for Wendy McPherson. So now, can't get down too low. You got to pick up the 2-5 and fill the best you possibly can. And what every player hopes for, an opportunity to go up and win your own tournament in the 10th frame. Jeannie May knew that Wendy could get up and just close her right out. And like you said, that's exactly what she was hoping for. I think that's got to be the toughest thing for a top seed to to get closed out before you even get a chance to go up in the 10th frame, but that will not be the story here. With a strike, it'll be a game of 2.03 for Wendy McPherson. Jeannie Main will have to get up and strike in her first shot. Yeah, but if you're going to win, that's the way to go. go the interesting thing will be, she's thrown those flush shots on 20 and didn't strike, and she throws the light when he gets the X. Beautiful performance by Wendy McPherson, but right now, the lady in red is in control of her own destiny. One strike for the title, through the nose, oh my! Oh my goodness, Jeannie Maiden gets the break of a lifetime and Wendy McPherson watches a title pass right through her fingertips. Oh my, uh, well, Jeannie says, so uh, what can I say? <laughs> I just tripped out the six, seven. I left two ringing 10 pins, three 10 pins earlier in the match. Wendy carries the Brooklyn. I just got the break of a lifetime. Now she needs nine. Easier to get that. And she leaves the bucket. She needed eight. Well, we're talking about two shots. On it. Well, on our first ball, Wendy McPherson is the winner. Yep. Wow. Jeannie needed seven and a spare to tie. Oh, my goodness. What a way to finish it up by one pin heartbreak. As Wendy McPherson comes away a winner, and you have to say that fate played a major role in this one. Here. John Adamick knows now that the strike here is a must. And really, both of these players, Donna and Sharon, have been all over the place difference this week between the right-handed condition and I think the left-handed condition. More speed, tighter angle, about as good a shot as she could hope for, and Donna Adamek leaves the 10 pin. That's the other thing that we haven't discussed. When you do hit the pocket, the carry isn't the easiest from inside. No, it is not. You've got a whole different angle. You're coming in from the left to the right versus uh, playing an out, more of an outside condition. You're coming in a much stronger angle. A six pin's able to kick at that 10 out much easier. Sharon Todd with three strikes could post 213. See if she can get it to the right side of the head pin this trip. A three bagger in the second, the third, and the fourth, and then pretty much a drought after that. And a couple of those Brooklyn's <laughs> yeah, thrown in there by Sharon really right. gave him uh, that three bagger. They haven't exactly labeled the pocket. Now this one should be plenty of room. See, this is my question. 
curveball hook. She had a great reaction. I, I don't think she opened up the lane enough. No, probably not. Uh, like I said, you just a little slow. That time she had a lot, a lot of speed. She opened up, gave it the room. You know, I guarantee you that ball was three or four boards right of where the other shots were. The first shot she threw, she left a solid four pin. Mm -hmm. And then she was Brooklyn, Brooklyn the next couple shots. Let's see if she swings it again. Well, it's tough when you can't trust it, Danny, and she doesn't feel that she can trust it too much. So she tries to close up the shoulders. And that she was a mistake. Yeah, I mean, when she closed up the shoulders, so. Well, not exactly what Mom was hoping for, but... Uh, a good stretch run, nevertheless. I, I tell you what, I don't think she realized that, that she had as much room as she did. Well, right now she is going to force uh, the Dare Street to spare. That was a key double in the 10th frame for mm -hmm. Sharon Todd. Almost the same scenario scenario as we had uh, last match with Dee Dee Davidson and Jackie Sellers. See, look at this ball. <laughs> she had a great reaction. I just think she found it way too late. But actually, she threw the strikes, though. She may have not found it. She only missed striking yeah, uh, one time. And yeah, she oh, a solid okay. four pit. That's something. <laughs> so she got away with a lot right there. here. Needs nine pins and a spare. You can see that. Print count very critical on because she's riding on a double right now. She's responded earlier. Oh, what a good shot there. That could have locked the match up if she strikes right there. Boy, that was one of the best shots she has thrown. The last two attempts that she has ha made, she left <laughs> all those light carried, I mean, five, five on the deck, and well, she just crunched it. See, that's what you like to see, a player now put in that position. That was Stuff City there. Mm -hmm. I mean, she throttled that shot right to the pocket. That's okay. a big sign. Denny, she must spare and strike, or we have a possible tie if she spares in nine. Good crisp shot at the seven pin. A little tippy toe back to the ball return. Maria says, all right, parts, one time, need an X here, and we'll just saunter on into the semifinal game. That was a tough seven pin to shoot at, Denny. She misses it. They're done. Right now, she strikes. They go on. Nine pins. They tie. Well, how many times has Donna Adamek been in that position? Sharon Todd is hoping, trying to win her first title. A little bit slower. And oh my. What a great shot. So the team of Lewis and Street come through in the clutch. And they knock off Sharon Todd and Donna Adamant. She took her time, Danny. That's what she needed to do. Her mistakes before. She was too fast. Check this shot out. Perfect. Trip six pin. This is her reaction. She thought it went a little high, but it was like, yes. A rocket to the pocket. And Maria said, yeah, I know you got it all the way. Highest TV pair average. Also, 222. Dee Dee with 11. Oh, and no carry. Again, a good shot. Almost left the 6 7. Almost. So we know 26 is definitely hooking. Really nice shot off her hand. Just jumped a little bit there at the end. You can see the 7 pin just going down. Quite a little bit of a break there just by leaving the 6 pin. Easy spare for Dee Dee. So on a spare again, the lead flip flops because Carolyn Doran Ballard has that strike up in the ninth frame. Dee Dee told us her spare shooting was great this week. She also changed to five steps last week. Very impressive for girls to be able to do that in the middle of a swing. You really have to have trust in yourself and in your game. You really have to know your game in order to, number one, do that, and number two, know to do it. So, very important. That's a good point for people at home, too, to make those changes. Carolyn Doran Ballard looking down. She doesn't want to see what's going to happen in here. She will have an opportunity to step up and win her seventh tournament of the year. Meanwhile, Dee Dee Davidson looking for her first victory this season. She wants it bad. She sure does. She can strike out here for a score of 204. 
And Carolyn Dorn Ballard can still strike out for 206. So a big, big shot coming up here. And her second shot in the 10th frame. This is where those pins on splits come into play. One, two pin games always comes down to the always comes down to the tenth frame. Doesn't matter how the game starts, it's always a nail biter every week. Mental toughness. That's what you'll see here. Tough shot for Kadidi. She just said two bad shot. She knew it. She'll need to spare it up. And she can force Carolyn Doran Ballard to strike. You can see she got it out to the left. A little too quick. Wasn't gonna recover. She knew it too. As soon as she turned around, she said bad shot. it up. Carolyn Dorn Ballard will need the first strike, strike nine stair to win this title. And let's just point out that she has not struck on lane 26 in two games. She did not strike on that on that lane the last game, and she hasn't struck yet on this lane this game. And she will have to find a way to throw one strike, nine spare, to break the PWBA record of six titles in a season held by Lisa Wagner in 88 and to tie the all-time pro record of seven titles in a season and held by Patty Costello in 76. Great shot. Well, it was great off her hand, but we said before, even for both players, 26 started to hook. And you can see right there, great off her hand, but jumped right there at the end. She knew it. She's begging for a trip four, but Dee Dee Davidson takes her first title of the year. We'll be back with more to oh. Adler. now leading by four pins but she's on the left lane where she's been struggling let's see if she makes the adjustment or something that a lot of the ladies said this week they were doing instead of making a big move they threw it a little bit harder instead of trying to make a big move because sometimes when they did that got the ball too far down the lane hit that break point went through it never recovered well Kim Terrell will need two strikes and seven pins to shut out Kim Adler speed on that ball. Last shot on that lane. Might have been a little soft. It was hooking a little early on her. Threw that one a little hard. Got the ball out onto the lane, which... Beautiful. And she likes it. And let me tell you, when Kim Terrell shows you emotion, you know she likes it. Needs this strike and seven pins. This is for back-to-back -back major events. She liked it. She's smiling. She made a great shot. She can't expect any more of herself. She makes the spare. So Kim Adler still has a chance here. But she will need two strikes. did all she could do 227 Kim Adler is going to need two strikes and about four pins to wrap this one up for the first match and then we would have another championship match as Dr. Dean said you have to step up to challenge Kim did now Kim Adler the last two shots on this lane has gone just a little high tripped the four once left the four pin the second time Champion for 2002. She'll end.
enjoy this moment, and we'll be right back with more. Obviously her job right now, the chore at hand, pick up the 10, throw a strike and shoot 170, and force Michelle Mullen to double. Right here as the ball just doesn't quite make it hard enough into the pocket at half 10. professional shot. So that forces Michelle to at least double. But if I were Michelle Mullen right now, I would be saying, hey, this one's fate. Yep. I opened the door, swung it wide open, both the doors to the barn, and uh, you know what? She didn't take it. I got a chance. Well, Michelle has hit lane 14 on both last two times that she was on it, so... If she could pick a lane, I think that would be the one she'd pick. It's got to give you some confidence. Tripped out the four in the six, and then threw a very solid shot in the eighth. Well, kicking out the four pin, it wasn't pretty, but a game of 170 may be enough. Two strikes and eight it would give Michelle Mullen 171. A lot of times that's how it should be, Denny, as that player gets up and throws a couple strikes to win. Michelle Mullen waiting for the re-rack here in the tent. Pressure builds. Beautiful shot, Danny. Beautiful, like she did last night when she needed it against Lori Nichols. She just got up there and just threw a superb shot. That was absolutely perfect. And what's so mind-boggling is, hey, why didn't you throw those throughout the first part of the game? Sometimes you need the pressure to build and get that adrenaline going. Michelle Mullen has the comeback win of the year. Really needs to take her time on this shot, Denny. Pin count is so important here. She needs eight. As a matter of fact, uh, this capacity crowd showed up a couple of hours early here this evening to get the best possible seats. So the ladies' pro bowlers tour well received in the uh, greater Houston area. Betty Morris was the winner here last year. Betty made the finals here this week, but uh, didn't quite get to the telecast. Judy Sutar needs a strike desperately, and once again, the old pro comes back. Well, that's the Hall of Famer showing up uh, right there. Here's a shot of her arm opening up, and this is Judy's uh, style right there, right up the second arrow, and she just swishes the five. And she'll show you a little of emotion. <laughs> Not much, but a little. <laughs> I think that's about the extent of it right there. <laughs> I've right. seen her slap her hands a couple times. Pressure shot now in the 10th for Judy Sutar, trying to stay alive in the opening game. Uh, about the 
best shot uh, here of the match. Now she trails by just 12. Could cut the lead to two if she strikes here. And uh, I think you're right. Your perception's right on the money there. That was probably the best shot. And, of course, in the toughest situation, how many times do you see the pros rise to the occasion and come up with that little extra shot when they need it? Judy knows exactly what she has to do in this situation. Well, I watched her last night in match play in a couple of crucial situations. Really slowed herself down, took a couple of deep breaths, and brought the, the heart rate right back down. And said, okay, let's just take it one shot at a time. She has bounced back here and now with a possible strike, a 193, and that's going to force Wendy McPherson to at least mark in the 10th. Once again, another super shot, just like the first one in the 10th, packed. Denny, she needs to get good count here. If she gets good count here, she forces Wendy actually to get good count on the first shot. So any buckets or any type of situation like that, Wendy could lose the match even if she spared him. out in the ninth and the tenth and so nine or better on the opening shot for Wendy McPherson or there could be some problems I tell you Denny three just superb shots right in a row well whatever David told her she must have listened <laughs> now pressure swings back to 20 year old Wendy McPherson doesn't waste any time oh my Excellent shot delivered that time by McPherson. And, uh, of course, her first title was the U.S. Open. And uh, you don't win the U.S. Open without making great clutch shots. No, and uh, this was a clutch shot since she hadn't really been lined up here on lane 16. She just uh, threw that one right up, almost what we call a tightrope in it. And Judy Sutar with a terrific finish, but... Uh, Unfazed youngster here needs nine on two balls, and she says, the heck with that, I'll just strike in the 11. And Judy Sutar, with a gallant effort here this evening in Houston, is going to come up with too little too late. Well, Judy always loved bowling here in Houston. Denny, she uh, won the Queens and the WIBC All Events and the WIBC team back in 1974. And... Uh, I know she's going to be feeling those two 10 pins that she missed earlier in the match. And being a roommate uh, this week, I'm going to hear a little bit about it, I'm sure. Well, you miss spares on national television. You're going to finish second. Striking out terrific clutch performance by both Judy Sutar and Wendy McPherson. So for 